I'm going to sketch the line of the sidewalk here just to get that, just to get things started and give me a reference point. Drawing things like this, uh, I can tell already this is, it's, this is difficult because, um, yeah, it's just a complicated thing to draw. So I'm going to try to, I'm looking for certain things like I'm marking where the bottom of this wheel is. I'll kind of block out where the wheels are sometimes or, or like round objects like that. Um, and then I'll look for other key things like this, the, I don't even know what this is called, like kind of the stem. Um, and you know, just to kind of get things going, just to see where I am. I can always refine things afterwards, but this is a difficult thing to draw. There's no doubt about it. And I'll look for spaces like, say, right over here, kind of mark where the tires are or the wheels, whatever. And I'll, I'll reference like two. Let's see how they relate. So it looks like this wheel's right above the top of this wheel. And I'm using the side of the photograph or the image to help me uh, as far as the drawing goes. I don't remember this one being so difficult. <laughs> like I did a six by six of it. And I don't remember, like, I mean, it was so many years ago, so, but it doesn't seem to me that, I, I don't remember it being, like, super hard to do, but it had to have been. The thing about these, like, complicated drawings like this is not to get discouraged. Um, just to keep going. And as long as everything's kind of close, like if it's in that kind of close to the right place, um, then you can make the adjustments and, you know, and fix things up if it's off. And I'm sort of looking for things like, you know, how these shapes relate to the sidewalk, you know? And I might block out some of the things like where this seat is. Looking for this, looking at this space up here. It looks like the top of the seat is about, no, that's a little higher, maybe like that. And over here, it's a little off center. So maybe like about there. And then it comes to about here. I'm looking at the space of the grass underneath, um, you know, this, whatever this uh, piping is here. Looks like I got the angle sort of close. It's going to come out here. Well, we'll look at the, the wheel, right? And it's going to come out maybe about right there. Yeah, so that looks like about right. And then it's going to come up to the bottom of the seat. See, so it looks like that seat looks like it needs to be a little lower. Right here. Shape of it is kind of unusual because of the perspective on it. Again, as long as this stuff is kind of in the right place, then I can. I can go from there, and I'm holding up, you know, my uh, brush to match angles. So, you know, like I'll, this angle right here, I'll hold it up to my computer, keep my arm stiff, and then check that angle. Looks like it needs to be a little bit steeper. And... I know a lot of people want um, real time, so I figure I'll do 
you know, try to keep this as real time as possible. I'm looking how far this step here, like how it relates to the wheel down below. Again, I don't have the wheel totally drawn accurately, but um, and then also the wheel over here, how this relates to this shape. It's kind of like sculpture in a way, you know, I'm kind of, I'm just going to be this. And I don't know that I'll add the tassels. I might leave those off. I think I will. I think I'll leave those off. And I'll probably simplify it and leave the bell off as well. Um, all right, so that the seat. Yeah, I think I got the seat a little bit big. And let's see what the angle of the uh, stem is here. It's like this. And then there's the... Notice how the forks come right to about the edge of the grass, which lines up with the edge of this step so that's about right and and that actually looked that that worked out because we got um and i'm looking for like the space between these two okay so the wheel tent looks like it's kind of a, an ellipse in this direction I have a feeling that the drawing on this is going to be the toughest part. You know, once the drawing is complete, or once I've got it kind of in the right place, um, then these forks kind of come out a little bit, don't they? And then they go like that. I feel like this space over here is a little bit... No, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close actually. Again, there's more of an elliptical feel like this. So I might have to fine tune that, but I think that's okay. Um, and then there's the fender. All right, this space is a little bit too big here. Alright, I might get rid of this. I think we're getting there, but <laughs> it's this is a tough one. That's why I'm glad I did this. Actually, I did this on a six by six. And you know, I just I've never done this one on a 10 by 10. And I'm feeling like a 10 by 10 is kind of a cool um because I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna take a lot of work. And so sometimes I'll think about the size of the painting, you know, it's like, alright, if this is gonna take a lot of work. I want to be able to charge enough to make it worthwhile, you know? So you did all this work on an 8x8, eight eight, you know, you don't make as much, and it might not even be worth your while to do it. I mean, artistically it could be, but financially, you know, you obviously got to be thinking financially, um, you know, in order to make a living. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little lower. Obviously, it needs to be it needs to intersect here, and then it goes like this, and kind of up again. I can fine tune the seat as long as it's kind of close, right? And then the fender. Kind of comes down to about here. And it's 
more rounded. Now, and one of the main things that attracted me to this scene also what it, you know, was or is the shape of the shadows. So kind of like this. It's kind of a, that's kind of a big ellipse. And you know, there's that uh, paddle here, center. I'm going to go down with it. And then Sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> I'm trying to It's funny too, because you guys are going to have a better idea, you know, while you're deep in the process, like you may be seeing things that I'm not seeing, you know, you may be just like saying to yourself, you know, what are you doing? Didn't you notice that this is out or that's out or whatever? And uh, cause you have a shrunken down view of what I'm seeing, but I'm just concentrating on at this point, doing the best I can to get these shapes laid out and then I will fine tune afterwards. Shadow there, shadow here. I may regret putting burnt sienna like this because, you know, it's going to gray down whatever violet or blue or whatever I put down as my, as my color, uh, my shadow color. And that goes like this, um, axle here, and this goes here. Really focusing on shapes here too. I mean, really focusing on shapes. That's the only way to really make this happen, honestly. So, that's solid. I think that's actually, all right, I'm going to roll back and, oh, that's, is that good? Close, a little bit too, how does that, that's a little too long. It only comes out about like to there. This is definitely a mental workout for sure. You know, it takes a lot of concentration. Uh, sometimes I'll look for like, where is the, you know, at what point is this curve closest to the edge here? Or where is the, you know, the point where it's bumped out the furthest? And it seems to be like a little bit lower than half, there we go, something like that. Kind of average out the curve too to see how it looks. Now I can tell already this space right there, it looks too big. Um, I think it needs to be shorter. This is, this, this space is too big. This space between the pipe coming down, the frame, I guess we should say, and this and the wheel looks okay, like that relationship. But this relationship seems a little big to me because there's a shadow that goes like that and it's, so I, I'd say we're looking closer to something like that. Uh, so this wheel might come down a little bit. And then there's, and this needs to come out a little bit too. 
seeing a little bit too much of that wheel. I don't know, that's pretty close. All right, so as usual, I'm gonna work dark to light. I wanna keep this feeling sort of spontaneous, as you guys know, that's kind of the way I roll. And I'm just gonna go in with like, I'm gonna go in pretty dramatic. I've got some dioxazine purple here. And the reason I am going in with this is because I want, um, you know, the actually the burnt sienna is going to kind of gray things down. So I'm just going to go in with this sort of thin. Okay, this there's a line that goes through. It looks like two all the way like that. I like the challenge of doing complicated things like this. Uh, and even though I've painted this exact subject before, not I won't say many times, well, I don't know, probably at least maybe four, but never this, never this large. Actually, this could make a good large painting because the subject, you know, tricycle is a rather large object. So it wouldn't be weird to do like a 20 by 20 of this. Maybe I'll do that actually. It reminds me, I don't know if you guys know the photographer, uh, um, William Eggleston. Eggleston is really, he's like uh, from the 70s. I, I really like his, his photography, very cool stuff. And he did uh, one of his most famous uh, photographs is of a tricycle. dig his work, so um, check it out. There was another photographer I used to list, look at a lot too, and if you're like, say, a Hopper fan, you know, you might you might like his work too. Uh, uh, Shore, Stephen Shore. Another, I guess he was like in the late 60s, early 70s. Stephen Shore um, drove across the country and uh, United States and then took photographs all along the way and then made a book about it and I just really like those photographs you know uh, I do I do a bit of photography like with my daughter you know when she was um, starting out she didn't have access to professional photographers but um, I had edited uh, you know, and shot and edited thousands and thousands of photographs for, uh, you know, for p painting purposes, right? And so it was not a big deal to shoot photographs for her. And I found that I really did like it. Um, composing shots is a good way to practice composition, period. I mean, it's whether it's photography or painting, you know, it's, you're still, you're still dealing with the elements of composition, uh, which I think are really, so it's really um, valuable to do. All right, I don't like how that intersects right there, so I wanna keep this maybe a little bit lower. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, get everything handled here, and then I'm gonna come in uh, and use the negative, uh, negative space or the negative shapes around the tricycle to kind of define it. So it's not going to matter right away if if some of these, you know, thin small parts are done uh, kind of in a rough fashion because I want, you know, even though this is a complicated subject, I like to have some brushwork uh, visible. So that's kind of the plan. The darkest thing I think is the wheels, and instead of drawing like, you know, a circle, I'm going to kind of do it in segments like this, kind of blocky. Um, and I've used a mixture of ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna, which gives a nice neutral uh, sort of black color. Again, I might have to 
I might have to fix these shapes. Um, we'll see. I will not be putting the white walls or the white stripe on the tires, I don't think. Certain details are just, at this scale, are just not practical and just cause more trouble than they're worth. Again, you're looking for a strong, simple design. And so, you know, that requires eliminating things that, you know, that kind of detract from the overall design. Uh, next thing I think I'll do is All right, next I'm going to put in the dark portions. Now, one more red in there. All right, so I'm using CAD Red Light for these dark portions of the tricycle. Uh, CAD Red Light mixed with a little bit of... What did I mix with it? Sorry, guys, I don't even remember. You know, my mixing can be so spontaneous sometimes that I don't even, I don't even know what I used. That seem weird? Um, I think I used dioxazine purple to darken it. Right, this is kind of on an angle, like that. And this goes like this. Again, I'm kind of focusing on shapes here. Um, as usual, that's kind of how I roll. Uh, let's see here, there's a shape here for this seat on the side, dark. This brush, by the way, is a number four synthetic, uh, flat, kind of long in precision. It's by Princeton, it's like a Princeton 6300. Okay. And it's going to be up here. It's going to come down. All right, now the pipe below. I keep calling it the pipe. It's a freaking frame, right? Now I might add, like I like when there's dark, um, like say bits of frame or whatever. I like to add that's actually, that's, that looks pretty good. I, I might add some red in there later. Like I like the shadows to be saturated, like have saturated color. Uh, so. Yeah, that actually looks kind of right, like right there. And then, I don't know what I'm going to do about that little plastic thing that's right on the on the handlebars. I think I'll leave that off and just have like chrome. The more chrome, the better. How many of you had like, um, like remember Schwinn sting stingrays? I remember like when I was a kid, the cool bike to have was a five-speed, or a, yeah, it was a Schwinn uh, Stingray with a five-speed stick shift. It, you know, I occasionally see them around, like it was just the dream bike for a young, for a young boy coming up in the world. Um, always wanted one. So we ended up though actually at Christmas time we had asked for them, and get, this is kind of weird, like kids know their, maybe, I don't know if this is a boy thing, or, but like, I think kids, like my brother and I, we really knew, we knew we wanted Schwinn Stingrays. I was five years old, which means he must have been four, which just seems crazy to me, but we knew that we wanted Schwinn Stingrays, and then my dad, you know, he probably thought, these kids, they're like, they don't, they don't need a Schwinn Stingray. I'll get them a Sears bike because they don't, 
They're five years, four and five years. They don't know anything about that. They're not, I'm not going to drop that extra cash on the swing shin. <sighs> Schwinn stingray. I'm going to get, you know, I'll just like save a few bucks, whatever. I don't blame them. I'm not saying, you know. But both Kevin and I, my brother and I, literally when we came down for Christmas, you know, like morning, and it was a Sears bike, not going to lie, we were both like kind of disappointed, you know. <sighs> Sorry, Dad, if you're watching this. Still appreciate that you got us bikes. In the end, it was all good. But just being honest, because that's what we do on this channel. We keep it honest. Keep it real. All right, I'm going to see if... I'm going to see if I can get, you know, a feeling of light. Actually, that's a little too saturated. I mean, it's a, the color's a little bit chalkier, right? Actually, too. So I'm using um, cadmium red. That's too dark. Uh, I'm using cadmium red light. Now I might even be able to use cadmium red light straight out of the tube. Um, there's like right along here, right? No, that needs to be lighter. And there's shadow too, so it's kind of like, no, that should be lighter. So I'm adding yellow to the cadmium, making it into an orange. That's way too thick, obviously. It looks like, uh, let's see, the shape down below has some, is kind of cool. So I'm going to add white to it, which will cool it off. Uh, and, you know, I can adjust all these colors later, and I will be doing that. Like most shiny objects, um, and this trike is shiny. Uh, like most shiny objects, you know, the, a lot of the definition comes from... Uh, like say from the highlight, which you can see there'll be a highlight, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there'll be like a highlight, like here. That didn't really work, did it? Like a highlight like here, and then some up here, whatever. So those are going to really do a lot to define it. Um, okay. And for now, I will put the red in up on the seat here, too. And that kind of goes like this. Yeah, there's going to be some nice highlights on this seat as well. Okay, the rims are going to be tricky. Actually, I think what I'll do first is I want to get the shadow that's in the wheel here. You know, there's spokes in there which could be suggested, but I'm going to put in the dark, the dark elements. So there's like, I can see a bit of the lower step in there. Okay, and then I can see... I'm just going to put in I'm going to put in the lower portion of the wheel too which is, you know, it's white but it's in shadow so I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, ultramarine here to kind of indicate where that is again, this is something that I can fix up later too you know, like adjust the value on that I don't want to be super, like, I don't want to be super careful with this. I let, I want it to feel spontaneous, you know. Um,
Actually, hmm. well, maybe that's okay. No, that's too high. Because it's got to line up with this section here uh, of the step, which is on an angle like that, like that. Now, again, I can carve this out afterwards, which I will be doing, but I don't want any extra paint on there if I don't need to have it on there. Uh, actually, I'm noticing right now, I don't know how I noticed this, but this wheel, this lower wheel is, it needs to be bigger, right? Because it extends out like Maybe more like that. God, no, I think it's wrong. This one looks okay up here. This one, however, Yeah, I think it's too... Maybe it needs to be a little bigger. Okay. And I'm looking at the value of the fender. There's some reflection on there, so I want to make sure that I put the blue. Like, I want saturation. The, the fender appears to be reflecting the sky. I'm going to want to get that really bright reflection on there. And so I want to make the blue, you know, saturated enough. Honestly, don't know how I did this in a 6x6. I don't know why I did it in a 6x6. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to put the, the dark portion, the shadow portion of the white part of the seat on there. Um, and then... Let's see this here. No, it's got sort of a purple look to it, you know, because it's kind of maybe reflecting a bit of the sky. Uh, again, I want it to be dark enough that I could put a few highlights on there if I need to. This angle comes down. Okay, and there is no dark line up here, but I'm just going to leave that like that. Um... I think I think we're getting there. I mean, you know, I I realize it looks kind of like a mess right now. But that's okay. That's okay. difference between you know this is lighter and warmer so I need to 
like I'm comparing the fender to the forks of the bike and there's definitely a temperature shift there. Um, I'm just going to experiment and see if I can get that to look somewhat accurate. Obviously it's still in shadow, but there's warmth to it and it's a different, it's a different value, it's lighter in value. But I want to keep it dark enough that the highlight that I put right here is going to pop. It's a balancing act. Okay, and then also there appears to be with the chrome, you know. Um, actually, there's there's I can see like when you're looking at chrome, there's things are reflected. For example, like right here, it appears to be reflecting green, like sort of the dark portions of the lawn, and then maybe a little bit here reflecting green. Um, there's definitely green reflection on the bottom of this fender here. That fender seems like it comes down like that. And then we'll also put in the um, we'll also put in the, the 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 blue or the a rim here. I feel like that's kind of a a warm. I'm using ultra ultramarine, but I'm kind of feeling like it's it, you know it's kind of a grayed down ultra. Like it's kind of a warm. I mean, a warm color in there. But we'll start with that. Uh, one of the keys to doing something like this is not getting discouraged, which is easy to do, definitely easy to do, because it's just overwhelming. You know, it's sort of the subject matter is sort of overwhelming. Um, but, you know, you just got to keep on going. All right, so I'm going to put in blue, uh, actually. Okay, so I rolled back and I noticed a couple. I'm going to just put a here. All right, so I rolled back and I noticed a couple things that need fixing. One is this upper step is more vert, or yeah, it's closer to vertical. That's actually still. That still needs to come up a bit, like, or more vertical, like that. I think the seat is okay. The front wheel is too, is too small. It needs to be bigger. And then I think, I think it's pretty good. And then I can, um, yeah, I think it's pretty close. At that point, it's pretty close. All right, so it needs to come up like a lot higher, I think. Notice how like I've got the fender coming down too far into the sidewalk area. Should be up like ending up here. Uh, there's going to be green, you know, maybe I can even put some of that green in now. Uh, let's see, and then the fender is going to be a little bit higher. Now, the thing that I like in um, in my paintings is I like them to have a loose feel, but to be, you know, I like the drawing to be um, well, you know, like accurate sort of. So underneath the looseness, I want you know solid structure or solid. Um, drawing. Now, that's just me. I have a philosophy about that, which is 
that if your drawing is going to be, your drawing should be, um, it should be in or out, but not close. Like, so in other words, if you miss the drawing by just a little bit, then it looks, it can look really bad. But if you, um, you know, if you have kind of an unusual drawing style and it's consistent and, you know, then that can really work. I like, there's a lot of paintings I really like that where the drawing is not spot on, but it has character. And there's like a certain personality and consistency to it. So it's not like I really care about, uh, but with me, I notice like, you know, my natural drawing, when I naturally draw something, I tend to get pretty close the first time. So then it's, then I just feel like I have to fix it, all the stuff that's uh, wrong with it just because of my style. It just wouldn't look good. Uh, as I said, just having it close, but not quite making it. Okay, let's see if that worked. All right, let's see here. That's definitely better, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it actually could even be, it might even be a little high, I don't know. Uh, I guess it's pretty good. I guess it's pretty good. There's gonna be, in here, the, um, in here, this area here, this is not the right color, but um, there's going to be grass in there that's going to kind of carve this out. Because I want to look at the negative sh um, shapes here to see what I've got and see if, how this negative shape in here doesn't look accurate, right? And then there's going to be some dark green. I think that actually does look pretty good. Um, that actually top fender angle on that top fender is wrong. like that and I'm going to look where that fender comes out in relation to this and it actually I guess it's fairly close there's more of an angle to it like that but I'm not going to worry about that for now cuts off like about there Again, I just want to get close. Um, the angle of this, this handle seems to be wrong. Should be more like that. Still feels like that wheel um, is a little bit, I don't know, maybe it's just an illusion. In other words, if we had some of the rim in there. This will look a little bigger. Yeah, I think that's that's good. I'm gonna have to patch that up. Uh, yeah, because there's kind of a bit of grass in there that's like like this. I think that's close enough right there. Okay.
really having to think this one out, I'll tell you. All right, I'm going to try to put in some of the I'm going to try to put in some of the real highlight areas and the seat is one. Kind of goes off like this. I don't want, I'm using a little bit of yellow in there. I don't want to use too much because it's not super warm. Uh, let's see where else. In fact, I think the light down here almost looks purplish, like it has dioxin purple in it. I guess I can start working on the shadows that are on the sidewalk, kind of refining those. I'm going to mix up a color for the sidewalk, and I think I'm going to go with that sort of pinkish color. Uh, my my driveways or my sidewalk has kind of a. Um, it's been it's like old. It's from the 1940s. This house, and they infused some sort of. Uh, dye into the, I guess they used to do that back in the day, like pink dye into the concrete. And so I want to make sure that I get kind of the feel of that. And what I could do to get these shadow colors is, now that I've mixed up this sort of pinkish color, I could add a little bit of purple to it. Um, that's not quite dark enough, obviously. I don't want my shadows to be super dark. Again, the, ca the camera is going to exaggerate the darkness of the shadows. There does appear to be a bit of warmth in the shadows right here. Uh, and they're a little bit lighter in value than the tire of the bike or the wheel of the bike or whatever. And the shadow is always darkest, you know, closest to the object that's casting the shadow. So in other words, like right in here, it's going to be dark. I'm trying to do this with simple, strong brushwork. You know, that's kind of the goal. Oops. I 
If I want to add spokes in there, I can do that after. And the same applies to the spokes up here as well. All right. I'm going to reinforce the darks. I'm still using All right, for the darks, I'm still going to use the mixture of ultramarine with um, with burnt sienna. As I said, that makes like the most powerful, neutral kind of black color. If I want a transparent um, dark that's not quite as dark as that, then I'll use uh, then I'll use the alizarin crimson mixture that I typically, I'll typically do that when I'm painting landscapes because I don't really want to have any, I don't need a, a like a really solid black color. This is actually technically transparent too because both colors are transparent. Um, but like I said, it's a much more neutral, um, you know, black color. Okay, I can see already the shape of this. I'm going to have to kind of mess with the shape of the shadow there. That's okay. All uh, right, and I'm going to come in with the darks of the grass. Maybe I won't go as dark with the grass as um, you know as it actually appears. Now, this whole dark area up here behind, I don't want it to be. It appears to kind of come straight across. Uh, I like. I want dark to be around here because it's going to make the seat pop and. Maybe I'll just kind of have it come down like this and then up a little bit. It doesn't have to be like exactly a straight line. Uh, and I can alter it too, but again, I do want the dark up here because I want the handlebars, like the chrome on the handlebars, to really stand out. And I will use a bigger brush. This is a bright number eight. And I'm just going to get something up here to start with. where we can really use these negative shapes to kind of define things. All right, that's where it starts getting light. And want that up there. It goes out to about like that. The green in here, it's interesting. It's very, I'm using phthalo. I'm going to use phthalo for that green because it's a very um, 
cool green, I guess you'd call it. Even though we put a warm green under here. Actually, I need to retouch that dark. That line like that, maybe? I think that's a little off. I can repair that right in here when I go over it with the other paint. You know, I'm noticing now we've got this complementary thing going here, these, the green of the grass and the red of the tricycle is kind of nice. Again, looking at the negative spaces and trying to get, you know, trying to keep the brushwork fairly simple. I might be adjusting these colors a little bit. Um, Although it's nice to kind of get it on the first pass. Pardon the concentration here. It's kind of got to focus a little bit. And I'm trying to figure out how much, like how much control I really want. You know, I don't want to. I want to keep it loose, you know, as you guys know. Like, there's some nice stuff going on in there. Uh, I don't even know quite how to explain what I like about it. I like how it's kind of blurry a little bit. You know, maybe putting some of the highlights on is all it's going to take. Like, in other words, highlights right around here on the, you know, and I can keep some of this, this sort of spontaneous you know, intentional, definitive brushwork, whatever you want to call it. Almost doesn't matter the subject matter, you know, the subject matter sometimes, I mean, I do like a tricycle, I think, you know, it's kind of cool. It's like part of all of our, almost all of us have, you know, kind of ridden a tricycle at one point or the other. <laughs> right? Some when we're children, some when we're adults. Some are still riding tricycles, um, maybe. Stable form of transportation. You may be one of those like trike motorcycles. Maybe, I don't know. Just putting it out there. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of, I guess that's kind of looking uh, it's kind of looking all right. I mean, that wheel is a little bit 
you get a, that or that you know the t- front tire is a little wonky. Um, almost feels like there should be needs to come over more like. And then let's see if I can fix that. And this bumps out a little too much. Oops, I messed it up. It's all right. There's a lot of back and forth with this sort of thing. Now I'm going to want to get a lot of, I'm going to, if I can, uh, I'm going to try to get a lot of saturation, like saturated red, because it's fun. This, this wheel bumps out too much. So we need to bring that in a bit. I'm not like I said. I'm not going to paint the white walls on these tires. Tires is out they are wheels. I don't. Know, I still haven't figured out what they are. And I can look through if I want to know what the axle. I can imagine the axle going through, and it would be something like this, right? Because it's got to go all the way through to the other one. And kind of the dark spot right here. All right, I'm going to start putting in some of the highlights, or just like suggesting some highlights um, to see where we stand. Because a lot of times the highlights will really bring the thing together. Uh, so it looks like there's obviously a really strong a little pop right here. Sometimes you got to go twice, you know. There's one there. There's one on the back of the seat, but that's writing. I think I'll leave that off. Um, there's bright right here. Kind of comes down a little bit too. And then super bright right there. And there's a little pop right there. And there's this edge. Let's see, how does that look? It's kind of an edge right here that's light. And certainly down. There's one right here. In the front edge. Okay. Also, the spokes. Do I want to add some spokes? Maybe I do. I don't know. Some light in there. There's a spoke. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll experiment. I can always eliminate the spokes if I want. Kind of a spoke here. And a little hint of one here. And here. They're kind of irregular uh, in their, how they're organized. It's weird. Um, but I think that's okay. Yeah, the question here is going to be how far to take the finish. 
I don't want it to be, as I've mentioned, I don't want it to be overworked. Now, strangely, there seems to be um, the light on the top of this tire in the back has a green tint to it. Almost like interesting, but like it's reflecting the grass, which is probably what it's doing. Whereas the other one, actually there's a little bit of green in this one too, which is kind of cool, cool way to get some compliment in there. Uh, and then there's a bright spot on the top of these wheels. So let me add those. But I don't want it to be too bright, but like right here, right here. And what else? Okay, so now I'm going to go in with some saturated color because that is fun. So I'm using cadmium red, cadmium red light, and maybe just a touch of cad yellow medium. And I'm going to put that, that saturated red into some of these areas here. And you try to use brush strokes that are very, you know, that are, that appear to know, like they exude purpose and confidence, right? Like they, you know, I'm not fishing around. It's like I'm laying it down. I know what I want to do. At least I'm trying to get that impression. Now there's some interesting detail on these steps. I don't know that I want to go for all that detail. Maybe just add a little bit. Also, it's nice to add some saturated color in the shadows as well. Especially on the bottom side, like there's some reflected light, uh, you know, up from the grass. So to add some of that reflected light on the bottoms, I think is really, can be really cool. Um, kind of some reflected light right here. And put a little bit of that over here. Messed up my wheel, it's all right. Squinting at that wheel, it, I, I can tell that this highlight here should be a little bit lighter. And this one too. Okay, and then, seems like there's a really dark or a really saturated red right in here. And it's a warm red too, so it's got, um, and I know I just messed up my um, I highlight, but I can fix that. All right, now that's going to be tricky. What is that color? I can tell what's going on there. That the sky is reflected on the seat. So there's almost like a purple uh, color to it, which would be the blue mixed with the red of the seat. The blue of the sky mixed with the red of the seat gives it kind of a purple color. Value it's higher in value. Okay, that's a mess. Its value is higher. I don't know if this will work. And then there's a light portion right here. I don't want to get too finicky again with it, but
too dark. Okay. This is a warmer. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't want to mess that up. That's kind of neat. So I'm putting some uh, warm areas into the shadows. And then also, maybe warmer blues in here, like a thalo blue, little bits of thalo. Maybe a little bit lighter. Back and forth is a big part of this process. Okay, and this is like a dark green in here. All right, and All right, so that the the rim is warm too, and the value is light. And there's a like a real strong pop of warm light on that on that rim. I might have to use a smaller brush for that. I'm gonna wait on that till the end. Lots of bright reflection on the bars. Right there. And then, Let's get some saturation into that handle grip or that grip, whatever it's called. Hand grip. Uh, just looking for colors in here like reflected sky colors and, you know, I'm not being too careful about it. I'm just estimating. Usually that's close enough, actually. There does appear to be a bit of warm light on the seat. I don't know, this painting could be too small for me to really effectively add that. I mean, I think that's okay.
Now, it almost seems like there's some phthalo down here. Maybe I'll add a little touch of phthalo over there to tie it together. Lighten up these. Kind of want to lighten up these shadows a little bit. Um, not like right in here by the, you know, where they're closer to the, you know, to the source of the shadow. I, I, I'm okay with leaving those dark, but as they move away, I want it to be lighter. And maybe have, yeah, maybe have a little bit of pink in them. I'm not sure. Well, that's kind of cool, I think. Maybe I want the shadows to be bluer. Because this is kind of dull. Just adding some ultramarine in here. Okay, so I'm going to stop at this point here, and you can see what I did was I came in and I darkened the grass area, uh, you know, the dark green towards the top, um, and I saturated the, you know, or added warmth to the sidewalk. I did a few touch-ups, like kind of boosting the red on the steps on the back, maybe a little bit on the seat as well. Just some general cleanup, um, but that is about it. Uh, I'm not even going to film an outro. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments if you like these long form videos. Um, this is a first for me. This is pretty long. Um, if you enjoyed it and you got some out of it and want to pitch in and help me uh, help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. I uh, post a bunch of videos on there, um, just little informative videos or just sharing thoughts, that sort of thing. Anyway, as usual, stay creative, guys. Thanks for hanging out. See you in the next video.